Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. Who needs birthday surprises when your wife's already planning her own special party downstairs? Today on our space, nothing says happy birthday like finding out your wife's been blowing out more than just candles. I apologize if this is not the appropriate place to share this, as seeking advice online isn't really my thing, and seeking advice in general is really hard for me, so bear with me. This also may be a really long one, so I'm sorry about that too. This is just also complicated. I have been in a relationship with my wife for 15 years, and we have been married for nearly 12. Together, we have two sons, one biological, and one who I consider mine in every way. I met my wife at a mutual friend's barbecue. She had come with a friend of mine's wife. They had worked together at the time. We hit it off that day and I thought we had been inseparable ever since that day. Lately, something changed. There's been a growing distance between us, an invisible wall that seems to be getting thicker by the day. I couldn't quite put my finger on when it started or why, but I felt it in the way that she looked at me, in the way she hesitated before speaking. It felt like we weren't on the same page at all. She'd go upstairs to read her book and I'd be downstairs for myself. She'd go out to meet her friends more often, leaving me to take care of the boys. I couldn't remember the last time we had a real conversation that wasn't about the kids or some mundane household chore. It was like we were going through the motions of being a married couple without actually being connected anymore. A few weeks ago, I dropped my wife off at her lash appointment while I went and did some quick running around. When I came back, I realized she left her phone in the car. I knew she'd be at at least another 20 minutes. After a bit, a notification popped up. It was my stepson. Even though I'm completely unaware on how to use Snapchat, I thought it would be funny to send him a message from me using a filter instead of his mom. I sent off a goofy picture back to him. After sending, I somehow stumbled in my wife's chat section. At first glance, it was nothing. I went to put the phone down, but then I noticed a name, a name I've always hated. I'll call him Lewis. At first, I hesitated. I never wanted to be that kind of person who invades someone's privacy by looking through their phone. I never thought I'd be that guy when it came to my wife. But then again, I never thought I'd be where I am right now. Curiosity got the best of me, and honestly, what I saw shocked me to my core. She had saved explicit photos of each other. There were nude photos of him and nude photos of her. There were videos. There were saved conversations about indecent actions between them. Without going into specifics, let's just say it involved oral sex. Despite the obvious betrayal, I couldn't stop myself from reading on. The scattered dates and sparse details from the past made it difficult to piece together the full story, but my curiosity drove me to keep going. With Snapchat, certain parts would automatically vanish, so this added another layer of complexity to the situation. What exactly happened? I needed to know it was eating me up inside. From what I gathered, things started happening a few times over the past few months, including on my birthday as I slept upstairs. She had planned a surprise party for me because it was a certain important milestone. I ended up getting too drunk and going upstairs to fall asleep while the rest of the guests were downstairs. I guess she had invited him over. She knew I wouldn't wake up, that I was dead drunk. When the last guest dipped out, he dipped in. The way she spoke about me was most devastating. It was rarely positive and often only partially true, with some statements even being outright false or misleading. I don't know why it was saved, but she told him that I was a lousy lover who seemed disinterested in her anymore, which is so far from the truth. I like to think that I still had my vigor and stamina. We were intimate about two to three nights a week on average, even with her being strange and acting weird towards me over the last little while. But now it all made sense. I suppose when I look back now, it's been me pleasuring her for the most part. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I love making my wife feel good. But sometimes it's nice to get something in return. And now that I think about it, that hasn't happened for quite some time. And then I go on to read that she's disgusted by me and hates me touching her. Well, in that moment, the salon door opens and she peeks out and smiles and waves me in. Was I a fool to pay for that for her? I was shocked, dumbfounded. I didn't smile back, but I remember making sure I closed the chat she had with Lewis, made sure it didn't look like I was snooping around. I put the phone back where I found it, and then I made my way inside the salon. The kicker then was the lash lady was telling me that my wife was saying how amazing a husband I was, and how she wishes she had a husband like me who treated her so well. I had to smile and laugh. What on earth could she have been telling this lady when I was reading something completely earth-shattering moments earlier? As soon as we reached our car, I couldn't hold it in any longer. I spilled all the details to her, making sure she understood not to touch her phone until we had a chance to discuss everything. We cried and yelled on the drive home. Once we arrived, I immediately delved into the issue at hand. 
She was hesitant, but eventually gave me her unlocked phone. It was a tough conversation from there on out. We argued over and over, with her denying and then admitting, until finally she relented. She confessed that she had been feeling neglected and undesired, but that it wasn't an excuse to cheat. It was a confession that left me feeling heartbroken and betrayed, but also confused. I couldn't understand how everything had spiraled so out of control. Then I started asking myself, had I been so focused on my own desires that I had neglected her needs? Had I unintentionally pushed her towards Lewis's arms? I had questioned her about Lewis, trying to understand the extent of their relationship. My wife had responded by saying that they had been texting and sending nudes for months, but that they had never slept together. She maintained that it had always been just a sexting relationship and nothing more. I told her that it was hard to believe based on the messages back and forth to Lewis. Then she admitted to the infidelity with Lewis in her own home on my birthday. She said they had sex in the spare bedroom in the basement. And then there was a time she said she went for a hike with a girlfriend and she had actually met up with him instead of her girlfriend. And they had sex off the trail in the middle of the bush. My heart fell to my feet as she confessed. I tried to remain composed, but my anger and pain boiled over. I had always been there for her, providing for her family and sacrificing my own personal time to be with her and our boys. How could she do this to me? How could she throw away everything we had built together? It gets better. I had to know everything. So I kept probing and asking all the questions that came to mind. As we got deeper into the conversation, she wasn't crying by the way, more and more was uncovered. Now this brings me to Lewis. Before we met, she had been seeing Lewis. I never liked the guy. She'd bring him up sometimes and sometimes even mutual friends would bring him up and I just hated it. There were little comments she'd bring up about him every now and again and looking back, I should have known, but hindsight is always 2020. What I didn't know was that she was seeing him behind my stepson's bio dad. Apparently, she didn't know who was my stepson's real father at the time she got pregnant, which is why the bio dad took off and left her. She kept seeing Lewis for a little while after, but he took off right before he was born and left her high and dry with my precious boy. Eventually, she said she got a paternity test because she was trying to get financial assistance from my stepson's bio dad and it was confirmed that he was, in fact, the father and not Lewis. As soon as she spoke those words, my thoughts ran wild and I confronted her about any and every situation where she could have potentially cheated. Most of the examples were minor, except for one that stood out. Many, many years ago, before we were even married, she didn't come home until almost 2 a.m. after work one night. I asked her where she had been, but all she said was that she was out. Despite my concerns, I brushed it off in my naive state of being in a new relationship. However, it was always stayed in the back of my mind and came up again on that particular night. As I asked her, trying to control my emotions that were a mix of anger and hurt, she immediately became tense. Now the waterworks. Tears started streaming down her face. She admitted to going for drinks with a male coworker who had been flirting with her. She had told him that she was single at the time and they went for drinks and ended up making out in his car in the parking lot of the bar. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The lies, the betrayal, the years of secrets. The pain of the past was now coming back to haunt us. It felt like a lifetime of love and trust had been shattered in just a few hours of uncovering the truth. I didn't know who I was speaking to anymore. And so now I'm here writing this. My wife went away for the weekend so we could have some space. Apparently she's at a girlfriend's house, but I can't even be sure about that. I told her that if I find out that she went to Lewis's place, that the marriage is over, that this is over. She said she wouldn't, but who knows? Who knows what's true anymore? I'm taking the boys to their volleyball games this weekend, so I'll be able to keep myself busy. But I'm at a loss here. It seems that every direction I look is the wrong one. I don't want to lose my wife. I don't want to lose my boys. I love my family more than anything. However, I refuse to just sit back and be taken advantage of. To be made to feel small and deceived, only to shrug it off and act like it didn't affect me. I feel completely alone and unsure of what to do. So I took a leap of faith and came here despite my lack of knowledge on the subject. I can't stop thinking about what she was telling Lewis. I feel totally emasculated. Do I file for divorce, seeing as how this seems to be a troubling trend? I wasn't lying when I said I found out she ran right to Lewis. This was it. I just have to figure out how to keep my boys. Being a father is the best thing that ever happened to me. Edit 1. I took pictures of the conversations they had and that we've had. I'm compiling the evidence just in case and to keep her honest. Edit 2. I think I need to take a break and process everything until tomorrow. This has all been a bit too much for me to handle at the moment, but I want to thank everyone for their comments and advice, even the ones who believe my fate is to be a cuckold. I knew that people would have different and passionate opinions, and that's what I wanted, to hear others' perspectives. It's just difficult to accept that my marriage may be over so suddenly after investing half of my life into building it. If anything changes, I'll make sure to post an update. Well, 
That's certainly one way to find out. Your wife's been keeping secrets like a squirrel hoarding nuts for winter, huh? And Louis, the mysterious figure lurking in the shadows of your marriage, making surprise appearances like a recurring villain in a bad movie sequel. Who needs Netflix when you've got this level of suspense right at home? At least you've got your priorities straight, documenting every scandalous detail, even though it's hard to read. Update 1 Monday morning came and my wife comes back home. She gets ready and I try to be cool and casual, ask where she stayed over the weekend before she goes to work. I just happened to be working from home that day. She told me it was a female co-worker, Natalia, because she was too embarrassed to tell our mutual friends that we got into an argument because we, she didn't want to tell them what it was about. She said she wants to fix this and doesn't want everyone knowing. She said we can fix this. I had a hunch that she wouldn't tell me the truth. There were a few ladies she's close to at work. One of them has become a close friend of mine as well, and I didn't think she'd go there to air out her dirty laundry. The other she's mentioned a few times. I know she's a real person because we've gone out on double dates a few times with whoever she's dating at the time. She can't keep a boyfriend. She's constantly dating someone new. And whenever my wife says she's going out for drinks with the girls, she's there. So I know she's a good time and sort of a bad influence. So if she's going anywhere to complain about a marriage and cry it out, it would have been her. So I'm not proud of it, but I go on Facebook and find Natalia's profile and message her on there. I kind of lie and say that I wanted to plan a fun date night with my wife next weekend, and I was hoping that Natalia could come along and invite whoever. I also go in and, and sort of say, I hope you and my wife had a good time over the weekend. She comes back and says she'd love to hang out, but then quickly says that she's not sure what I'm talking about. She said she's been out of town for a funeral, but we'll be back in time for the date night next weekend. And so then I knew. My wife had been lying. Again. I sat there in disbelief, staring at my phone as I read Natalia's response. My heart raced as I tried to make sense of the information. She had lied to me again. It was like a knife twisting in my gut. I couldn't believe the extent of her deceit. I felt a surge of anger and hurt course through my veins. How could she do this to me? To our family? I thought we were partners, equals in this marriage. But now, I started to wonder if I had ever truly known her. Well, it's over. She said she didn't want everyone knowing. I picked up the phone and called my brother, who just went through something similar. I told him what happened, and I'm not afraid to say that I shed some tears. I couldn't let my wife continue to lie and manipulate me. It was time to take control of my life and protect my family. He gave me the information to his lawyer and I immediately emailed him. His assistant got back right away and I got things started. I said I wanted joint custody of my kids and explained the situation. I told my brother not to tell anybody quite yet, but that I wanted to get things settled and really hit her where it hurts before anybody found out. Smooth move, OP. Kudos on the swift decision to call in the cavalry, because nothing says I'm done with your lies like calling up the lawyer and dropping the D word. Your wife's lies are like a slap in the face, leaving you reeling with disbelief and betrayal. From fabricating tales about innocent outings to concocting elaborate excuses, she's mastered the art of deception with alarming ease. Update 2 A few weeks later, I received a call from the lawyer's office. He informed me that the divorce was underway and that I needed to gather all pertinent information and documents. I felt a sense of relief knowing that I was taking the necessary steps to protect myself and my family. During this time, I also reached out to a therapist to help me navigate the emotional turmoil I was experiencing. He also said that I had a good chance of keeping my kids with me if they chose to stay with me. Well, that also scared me because I felt like we were all so close. I didn't want my kids to have to choose between their mom or dad. This was all supposed to be pretty secret. I wanted to make sure I had everything covered before giving her the papers because I didn't know how she'd react. So I was essentially waiting for the right moment. Some of you might think that I was just dragging it on, but I wasn't. There was a method to the madness. Yes, during all of this, I was still acting like I was wanting to fix things with my wife. I couldn't give her any ideas that I was wanting to end things, so I played along. I tried to play house to the best of my ability. But then there was sort of this sticky thing that happened. In trying to keep things secret, things, in fact, did not stay a secret. My brother, of course, told his wife, and his wife then kind of spilled the beans to everyone. I wasn't really mad about it, but then it ended up getting back to my sons because their cousins told them what their mom had done. My sons sat me down one day while their mom was out and said that they knew what was going on with me and mom. They said they had my back and that they said no matter what, they don't want to live with her. I told them I'd do whatever I could to make that happen. Later that day, I decided to give my soon-to-be ex the divorce papers. As I handed her the papers, she was in shock. She couldn't believe that I had taken such a drastic measure and she begged me to reconsider. But I was firm in my decision. I made it clear that I wanted to do what was best for our kids and that I was willing to fight for their best interest in the coming weeks. The legal process began. We met with our respective lawyers and the negotiations started. Every day, 
I felt the weight of the divorce hanging over me like a dark cloud, but I knew that I had to be strong for my kids. During this time, the boys stayed with me and my soon-to-be ex moved out. You guessed it, she went to stay with Lewis. Yikes. Your carefully constructed plan starts to unravel faster than a cheap sweater in the wash. Thanks a lot, loose-lipped relatives, for turning a covert operation into a family gossip fest. And let's not forget the emotional bombshell dropped by your sons when they pledged their allegiance to Team Dad. Their declaration that they don't want to live with their mom, that they have your back, is nothing short of touching. It's a testament to the bond you've built with them. Update 3 The boys are with me full time and that's now legal in the court. My ex gets them every second weekend but that was only if she moved out of Lewis's place and got her own apartment, which she did. She stayed with Lewis a little bit longer. She had also quit her job that she's been at for over 10 years because he claimed he had an opportunity for her to work from home doing something with his business or something like that, but he actually ended up getting arrested for tax evasion. I don't really know the details. Anyway, I'll try to keep things as simple as possible. She's out of a job and she's currently looking for employment. She's asked me for money a few times to pay the rent, but I flat out told her that I can't do it. I think she's now looking to move back into her family home with her mom and dad. She has nowhere else to go. Everyone's pretty not impressed with her right now and the boys don't really want to have anything to do with her. The divorce proceedings were difficult and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was a roller coaster of emotions and it felt like a heavy weight was on my chest every day. My ex tried to pull me down and there were times when I thought I would never see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I kept going, not just for myself but for my boys. They needed a stable environment and I knew that I had to be the one to provide that for them. Well, it sounds like your ex has really hit rock bottom, huh? Good. I mean, quitting her job for a sketchy work from home opportunity with her tax evading beau? Really? Hey, at least you've got the boys on your side, right? They're like the ultimate judge and jury, handing down the verdict of, we don't want anything to do with mom, faster than you can say child support payments. As for you, you're just trying to keep your head above water in this sea of drama. It's like being the captain of the Titanic, except instead of an iceberg, you're navigating through your ex's train wreck of the life choices. Cheers to standing firm in the face of adversity and forging a brighter future for yourself and your boys. What do you make of this? Did you ever have to maintain a sense of stability and normalcy for your children amidst the chaos of divorce? Share your stories with us in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time.